In part one, the importance of food safety, you'll find out how many Americans are affected by foodborne illness nationwide. We'll meet an environmental health inspector and discuss how cleanliness is a key factor in his work. Every kitchen requires a person in charge, and we will introduce a PIC to talk about their responsibilities. Then we'll focus on who is at risk, where we learn which segments of the population are most at risk for foodborne illness or injury, and how you can help keep them safe. Without proper food handling practices, the public becomes at risk for foodborne illness or injury from hazards in the foods they consume. Anyone who's had food poisoning or a foodborne illness or injury knows it's an unpleasant experience. But with estimates that about 48 million Americans get sick, with 128,000 hospitalized, and over 3,000 deaths annually from unsafe food nationwide, it's important to remember that following food safety rules saves lives. We asked Zach Manning, an environmental health inspector for Lane County in Oregon, to tell us about his role in maintaining public health and what he looks for during his inspections of restaurants and food service facilities. The most important thing is, is this restaurant clean? If you have a dirty restaurant, that tells me a lot. That means there's miscommunication, the restaurant is unorganized, and there is a lack of effort being put forth. This all falls on the person in charge. Cleanliness is key to any restaurant and kitchen. A dirty, disorganized kitchen is less likely to be following good food safety practices. The second thing Zach looks at is the competence of the person in charge. A person in charge that is competent and knowledgeable is required in all restaurants at all times. If I do not have a knowledgeable PIC, it makes my job very challenging ensuring food safety. A person in charge, or PIC, must be on the premises during all hours of operation and must know the food code and procedures used in the establishment. They should be able to answer all employee questions regarding food safety and provide training on how to perform jobs correctly. As the person in charge, I'm responsible for all the food safety and sanitation in the department. I'm responsible for all the food that comes in as well as all the meals that go out. Food safety is everyone's business. If the public feels unsafe, the entire industry suffers. The general public needs to have trust that the establishments they patronize follow the basic food safety guidelines. But no matter what precautions are taken to ensure their safety, certain segments of the population are still more prone to becoming sick or experiencing worse than normal symptoms from foodborne illness. It's easy to remember how to identify highly susceptible populations by using the acronym YOPI. The Y stands for children younger than five years old. O is for older than 65 years of age. P is for pregnant women. And I stands for those that are immune compromised, meaning having a serious illness like cancer, HIV, diabetes, or other conditions as well as those prescribed certain medications. Our compliance rules are really geared towards the susceptible populations. So by following basic food safety rules, we can mitigate any negative impact on those people at risk. Because of people in the YOPI category, extra caution needs to be exercised when dealing with undercooked meats, raw oysters, undercooked eggs, sprouts, as well as unpasteurized milk or juices. Before we move on to part two, let's recap some facts about the importance of food safety. In the US, there's an estimated 48 million cases of foodborne illness or injury, resulting in over 3,000 deaths annually. What is the most important factor in food safety? Cleanliness, according to our environmental health inspector, because an unclean restaurant or kitchen is often a sign of larger potential health hazards. A person in charge is required at all times to ensure proper food handling practices are being followed. We learn the acronym YOPI. That stands for Young, Old, Pregnant, or Immune Compromised and 
helps us remember the types of people who are most at risk for foodborne illness or injury. Finally, we listed some foods that require extra caution due to people in the Yopi category, including meats, oysters, eggs, sprouts, and unpasteurized juices.